Hi, and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around, I've got a little bit of a December haul from Umbrella Entertainment. They've sent me a couple of things, a couple of hardcover boxes. One's got four movies in it. One's got two versions of another movie. One's from 1995, and the other ones date from 2011 onwards. Four different movies set in the same universe, the same series, made independently. Some of it was crowdfunded, and it is weird. It is trauma weird. By the way, in case you're wondering, it is incredibly hot here and very humid. It's 100% humidity. And so if I start sweating, it isn't because of withdrawal symptoms from caffeine. I'm off coffee for 30 hours while I get a medical test done. And it's dragging me down. I'm starting to feel like Frank Sinatra and the man with the golden arm. But I will persevere. I'll get through the video and we will have some fun. The first one I knew zero about. Absolutely nothing. But I thought I'd give it a go. I like promoting on the channel smaller movies and smaller movie series and smaller creators. And so does Umbrella Entertainment, which is why they're releasing these ones. This one's got 300 copies in this edition. I've got number 77, Sunset Strip. And it is called the FP Collection. Now I'm going to show you the back cover. I'll strip off the back card. And there's the back cover. It's a weird little movie made by a couple of guys called the Trost Brothers, which is set in a town called Fraser Park in California in a post-apocalyptic setting. And two gangs are going up against each other in a dance computer game. It's like Dance Dance Revolution, only it's called Beat Beat Devastation. The two gangs are going up each other to see who owns the turf in the post-apocalyptic world. It's low budget. In fact, it costs $40,000 to make the first movie. And up until the time of this being released, it hadn't made the money back yet. And I kind of love these orphan kitten movies where they don't get enough love and only a few people know about them. Nonetheless, every time I watch them, I find them quite interesting. I'll show you the back cover first. There are all your extras in case you want to freeze frame them. There's the front again. There's me again. So disc one has the FP, which is the first movie. New audio commentary with Jason Trost, who is one of the makers of the movie. The making of FP part one, the making of FP part two, goring the FP and a trailer. The disc also has FP two beats of rage, which is a cool name for the movie. Audio commentary behind the scenes, silver screen muggers, FP tour, new FP two or Lego edition, which I'm looking forward to seeing. What is FP2 about? Deleted scenes in the trailer. The second disc has FP3 Escape from Baco, which is the third movie. Audio commentary behind the beats. Stanya Uncut, the Quattro in the Heat of the Night music video. A poster time lapse in the trailer. It also has FP4 EVZ, worldwide first time on Blu ray. New audio commentary, new behind the beats. New Jatro serial commercial, new creativity and shiz, new the FP final beat off, and a trailer. So these guys have really dedicated to their cinematic universe in a big way. And that's just the hard box set. We then have the slip cover, which has got some beautiful cover art on it. That'll give you a little bit of a vibe about what these movies are about. On the back, you've got the kind of racing stripe logo there. And we'll take the discs out of the slip cover. There's some cover art for it. On the back you've got the usual blurbs and things. Does this one have a reversible cover? Yes it does. It's got the reversible cover so you can get rid of the Australian censorship thing by flipping it around and watching it that way. Which is something the other movie has as well and I will do and I have done that for the other movie. So we get the two discs there. Which is great. And then we get posters and we always love posters. In fact, the, the usual reversible poster. There's the first one with some great cover art there. Got like that. And the other one is the cover art as it is on the disc box itself. And then because this is Umbrella, we also get more extras. We get some cards. There's one for Beats of Rage, which is kind of cool looking. FB3 Escape from Barco has an anime style poster for it. There's some beautiful art there as well. You've got the original FP1 artwork, FP4 artwork, got Beatro, one of the antagonists, and Jatro, the main hero, and El Dabei, who is the villain. So we've got all of that. 
Plus, there's more. You get steak knives. No, you don't get steak knives. You get the FP collection. A really good poster book with some fantastic artwork in it. Now, the Trosts have worked on a whole bunch of other films as well. They're not just doing this stuff. But they've worked on other films. In fact, one of them was the cinematographer on the Neville Dean Taylor movie. A crank high voltage with Jason Statham where he plays Chev Chelios and goes totally mad. So these guys know what their way around a camera and know their way around a film set. So I'm looking forward to seeing these movies, just putting one on casually when I'm in the mood for something not too taxing and not too heavy. And thanks to Umbrella for giving me that one. Then we get on to a 1995 horror neo-noir movie, which I saw in the cinemas at the time. And I remember enjoying, and I enjoyed it when I watched it again today, because I've received all this stuff only today. Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. There's some really nice cover art on the box. Really like that. And here's the back. I'll freeze on that one. Let me just sharpen the screen there. A lot of stuff in here. It's two discs. First one's got the theatrical version of the movie that came out of the cinemas. Second one's got Clive Barker's director's cut of it, which is extended and it's got a little bit more of the gritty stuff in it. So this one's got the theatrical cut, theatrical trailer. This two has Lord of Illusions director's cut, feature length audio commentary with Clive Barker. The Damnation Game interview with the ESFX makeup artist Howard Berger. Mystery Magic interview with production designer Steve Hardy. Gathering of Magic, Making of Featurette, Archival Behind the Scenes Footage, Deleted Scenes with Optional Clive Barker co uh, Commentary, Photo and Conceptual Art Gallery, Storyboard to Film Comparison, Teaser Trailer, and a note from Clive Barker. By the way, the FP Collection is Region Unlocked, but this one is Region B. So let's look inside. Got a bit of a nice slip cover there. And on the back it says, Clive Barker has seen the future of terror. Now you will too. So we'll go into the disc first. Slip it out of the slipcover. There's your more traditional artwork, which is the one when I first saw this on, I think it may even have been VHS. And on the back is the note from Clive Barker from 1995, where he just does a little bit of background on the movie. So there's some reading for you there. As I said, this has got the reversible cover to get rid of the Australian censorship rating. And on the reversible cover, a part of it, you've got the traditional kind of um, cover and with all of the details on it there. You get the two discs as well. You get the uh, theatrical version and there's the director's cut, which I recommend. I watched that one and I enjoyed it. You also, of course, get a poster with that artwork on it. And on the back, that one, sideways. And I prefer this one. I really like this artwork. I think it really pops. And of course there are extras as well. I will show you the cards. There's one card I'll have to go through fast because it's got a little bit of claret on it. They're all lobby cards, these ones. They're the um, one of the acolytes of the bad guy, William Nix, in the movie. There's another bit of gory stuff there. Fanka Jansen's in the movie along with Scott Bakula and Daniel Von Bargen. There she is there. Kevin O'Connor's in it as well. And there he is getting some very leery acupuncture. There's Kevin O'Connor again. Scott Bakula playing Harry Damore, the private eye protagonist of many Clive Barker novels and stories. And we get that, which is actually a stage production of a magician show, which has done very well as well. And there's one more. Then we also have a booklet. There it is. There's William Nix after they capture him and bury him. Now there's some nice extras in this as well. You've got uh, such magical sights. Uh, uh, they say by Philip and Sarah Stokes. You've got the making of Lord of Illusions by Anthony C. Ferrante. There it is there. Which is quite extensive. It goes into incredible detail about casting, production, production design, direction, and all of the stuff that Clive Barker wanted. And there's an essay by Andrew Nettie, Flesh is a Trap and Magic Sets Us Free, which is a quote from the movie. Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions and Private Investigators and the Occult on Phil. So you've got a nice essay from Andrew, who's always good value. And I saw the movie, and I liked it. Basically, it starts out 12 years before the main action, 
where an apocalyptic devil cult led by a guy called William Nix, who calls himself the Puritan, is planning to sacrifice a young girl to hell, basically. There are no specific demons in this, but it's hell. Some ex-cult members, including a guy played by Kevin O'Connor called Swan, travel to the compound in the desert where the cult lives, and the production design on the cult lair is really, really good. And they confront Nix. He gets shot, and he gets put in a very ugly face mask, which is bolted to his head, and he's buried deep beneath the earth. The cultists scatter, and 13 years later, a New York private eye called Harry Damore, who has a lot of knowledge and experience with occult things, he's just stopped an ex- he's just had an encounter with an exorcism, he travels to Los Angeles and is caught up in the goings-on of Philip Swan, a stage illusionist played by Kevin O'Connor, who actually uses real magic in his stage illusions. One of the stage illusions goes desperately wrong, and at the behest of Swan's wife, played by Famke Jansen, Harry investigates Swan's death and investigates this cult. Meanwhile, the cultists are planning to dig up and resurrect William Nix, which they do. And things go from bad to worse to what the hell. This movie I liked a lot. Scott Bakula is a very personable antagonist. Famke Jansen's good in it. Kevin O'Connor has been good in everything. And Daniel Von Bargen playing William Nix is an interesting character actor. Clive Barker had a particular vision for his villain in this movie. He didn't want a charismatic villain. He wanted a villain who is creepily ordinary. He's not charismatic at all. He's not wonderful. He is dangerous and he is scary. But he kind of avoids the tropes that are usually part of this kind of scenario in a horror film. And Daniel Von Bargen does a really good job of that, particularly after he's resurrected, when Nix has some powers, but he comes back rather pathetic. All of his age, acolytes have aged 13 years and have their own lives, which they immediately drop when, which they immediately drop when someone travel from all over America back to the compound. And they're a creepy lot too. They're really horrifyingly ordinary. And I think that was the point for Clive Barker in making this, that the evil is banal. There's that old trope about the banality of evil. And Clive Barker leans into this with this. It is a very gory movie. There are some computer-generated special effects which, let's just say, are ill-considered. There are some fire effects that work in a couple of other things, but there are some that really draw attention to themselves in a modern context. But 1995 was still very early in the art of computer-generated special effects in films, and so we'll give it a pass on that. It's a really fun film to watch. Uh, If you're into horror, seeing a horror film from, what, 28 years ago is a lot of fun and just seeing how it may have influenced other things. Clive Barker along with Cronenberg is one of those guys in cinema who really leaned into and embraced and confronted an audience with body horror and there is a fair bit of body horror in this one in a creepy way. The special effects makeup is superb, the acting's good, the banality of the antagonist is kind of interesting and it sets the audience back a little bit. You know, why doesn't this guy have more ribs? The point is that evil very often is banal. And I think that was the point that Clive Barker was making in this one. So that's the haul I got for December from Umbrella. Thanks very much to Umbrella Entertainment, who keep putting out these obscurities, but fun movies. They're not going for the really big ones. They're not going to bring out an Indiana Jones movie. In fact, nobody is in Australia at the moment. They're bringing out weird and wonderful things that you might not know about, but when you experience them, you enjoy them and understand why Umbrella did what they did. So that's it for this time around. Thanks a lot for watching. It's been a great year. I've got a few more videos before the end of the year. I'm doing my end of year holiday haul that I've got, and I've got a bunch of things for that. I'm also doing Science Fiction Saturday, where I'm doing the Green Slime, among other things, this weekend. Uh, it's been a good year for the channel, it's been a good year for me, and it's uh, been a lot of fun just learning how to do these kind of videos and trying to get better at them. 
Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell, leave an emoji if you want to. You can also support the channel by becoming a channel member. You can also hit the donate button on the YouTube app. And you can also become a channel patron by donating at patreon.com slash movies. A lot of good things coming up and not going to slow down anytime soon. So until then, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Watch some weird little movies you've never seen before and you'll probably enjoy. And I'll catch you next time.